Uh, Earl Grant joins us from Chestnut Hill this morning. Coach, great to have you with us. Uh, quick check of the weather. What do we got? I mean, you know, I'm trying to get up there to do the game with Mark Plansky tomorrow. How am I doing on weather this morning? A beautiful wintry mix. A beautiful wintry mix. Yeah, but, but coach, does that mean Wes can make it or not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think I think he can make it. I think he can make it. Um, All right. According to what I see out my window right now, it's some snow, but it's beautiful. It's there not what we've seen. Mm-hmm. It's not what we've seen with some of the storms we had. So I yeah. would imagine by this afternoon it'll clear up a little bit, and uh, How- we should be okay. <laughs> How's the guy from North Charleston, South Carolina, adopted up there? I, I'm going to guess it's been okay, right? Not bad? Yeah, it's been okay. It's been okay. I mean, you know, um, I've, I'm have i a Southerner, but I, I'm very thankful that I'm getting mm. Northern exposure. Um, <laughs> you know, but I lived in Wichita, Kansas. Right. You know, when I was right. at Wichita State, and we, we had a lot of snow. We had four seasons. And I kind of grew to really enjoy that, and it's nice to – it's nice to be back in a place where you have four seasons. I spent plenty of time in the South, and, um, you know, it's been great. Yeah. Coach, I've said this multiple times on the show this year, watching your team, and I know you want to win more games. Everybody does. Uh, I know you want to get uh, recruiting, rocking and rolling, bring in bigger and better recruits. Everybody does. But I tell you what, in year one, your kids play hard. Every time I've watched your team play, I know maybe sometimes the results haven't been great. The last two have been terrific. But, man, your guys have bought into what you're selling. So congratulations on that to you, your staff, and your players. I know there's still a lot of work to be done. But, man, you could absolutely see strides being made with this BC program. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I really enjoy this group. And, uh, you know, I thank God that he gave me the peace not to really coach for result. You know, I've been coaching for uh, behavior. You know, I kind of know what a winning team and a winning program looks like. I've been fortunate enough in my career to see it, so I know what it looks like. And so I'm just trying to coach winning behavior, um, you know, getting guys to really, you know, care about each other, uh, play with the right effort and energy, you know, be unselfish, have good body language, you know, and have a good spirit. So, and be an everyday worker. And and that's really that's really what I've enjoyed the most because I hadn't really coached for result. You know, we have lost some games, and I told the guys in those losses, you can lose a game and still be a winner. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're a loser, it's in your behavior. And so we we got a bunch of winners. Uh, We have won some games, but we haven't really, you know, got caught up in that. It's just been a joy to coach this group because they have worked hard every day. Earl, when you went and put this team together, uh, you obviously had a lot of variables. I mean, you were a portal guy. You were a J.C., you brought uh, Zachary in, who I think is a terrific player, going to be a really big factor as you move forward here. That uh, then you had Demar and 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 Makai left over, who were there prior to. I mean, you got a little combination of everything. But you just mentioned coaching attitude, coaching effort, as much as wins and losses. How much of that buy-in has occurred over the course of the season from, hey, this is kind of what we're going to try and do, to now there's almost an expectation of execution, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, you know, just really fortunate that um, I inherited just a couple guys that, like, really fit what we do. You know, you mentioned DeMar Langford, you know, and, and, and Makai Langford. You know, those are the type of guys I would try to recruit, you know, in terms of mm-hmm. athleticism and speed and toughness. But then when you really take a deeper dive, you realize their parents did a great job raising them. They're really good people. They want to be successful. They want to win. And then James Carnick was a leftover, too. And he's, he's been a great uh, human being as well and really has started to flourish, you know, in our program. Uh, you mentioned Jaden Zachary, you know, just really, really fortunate. Um we looked at a lot of point guards when I got the job. We searched. We looked. Uh, we turned down a lot of guys. We went through maybe four or five different kids. And then when I saw him, you know, I was excited about his physical build, his toughness, his story, you know, and who he played for. He played for Chris Cheney, who mm-hmm. I met when Chris was at Lorenberg Prep down in North Carolina. He sent like five kids to play for Calipari in Memphis. He's a good coach. Then he went to Chipotle and uh, played for Donnie Tinder, who's been yeah. a power five coach. So, he was, he, he's been coached. He was battle tested. And I thought he was going to be a backup for 10 minutes this year, but he's really been a great point guard for us. 
Hey, by the way, after what Quentin Post did the last game, everybody on the uh, team want to wear a mask for Clemson tomorrow? I'm just asking. <laughs> hey, man, hey, I told him I like you better than the mask, buddy. I like, I, like you, I like you better than the mask. Yeah, I mean, kind of weird, right? Yeah, all of a sudden he puts that, uh, becomes the mask man, goes Lone Ranger on you, and he goes off in Raleigh. What, what, did you realize there were superpowers in that thing? Not really, not really. He wore a hairband a couple of days before he surprised me, and I don't like surprises. And I told him, I said, I think I like you a little better in the face mask than I, than I like you in that hairband. And, uh, you know, he just play, he just played well. He was physical. He was big. And we started the two bigger guys. Uh, you know, TJ Bickerstaff been out for about three or four games. He usually starts at the four. And then DeMar Langford misses the Florida State game in the second half of the Syracuse game. And so he hadn't practiced. So we started the two big guys. And, you know, it really worked for us that game. You know, so um, we played Quentin at the four and he's seven foot. Uh, I know you and Brad Brunell have a great relationship, but uh, man, what you did to him down there in Tigertown back there in January, coach down 23, you're sitting there looking at the scoreboard in the first half thinking, man, we're going to get beat by 50 tonight, but no, no, no. You come back and you win that game. How was that a catalyst for the rest of the second half of this season? Well, you know, a couple of people after the game, uh, they were like, man, you did a good job in that game, man. And, you know, wow, you coached him up. I said, did you feel that way when we were down 23? <laughs> and so, you know, that was nothing but the Lord, man. That was nothing but the Lord. I don't really know how to describe that, you know, to, to, to be in that situation, be down the way we were, and our guys just rally and, you know, made shots, you know, really played with a great collective determined spirit. Uh, it, it was just unbelievable. And, and being in this league, you know, what I noticed, you know, Brad obviously done a lot for my career, gave me opportunity at Clemson when I left Wichita State, taught me a lot. Um, you know, we coach these games, but, you know, our friendship will last forever. You, you want to win games. You want to see your buddies do well. And then the hard thing is you have to play against each other and they get a little, ten, a little tensed and a little tight. And so, uh, and I feel that way about a lot of, you know, people in the league, you know, a lot of friends that you're playing against, Mm -hmm. And then, it's, you know, there's some tension there now. Um, yeah. So Brad will always be somebody that I respect and appreciate. Um, you know, he did a lot for me. He still do a lot for me. And he's an unbelievable coach. And, uh, you know, we play tomorrow at three. And, uh, you know, I hope that both our teams can play well. You know, certainly it'd be nice to see my team come out and play with a great spirit and attitude. But but that friendship is bigger than these games. And, and he's just really been uh, really good to me. I want to I want to follow up a little bit about the long game here, and the long game stretches beyond the end of this season and gets into next season. How much do you feel like the close of the of the twenty one twenty two can benefit the twenty two twenty three Eagles, Earl? I mean, I, I think it can benefit um, a lot if we we finish the right way. Uh, what I what I tried to tell my team is just we just want to be playing our best in March. You know, we want to give ourselves a chance to play our best in March. And in order to do that, you have to continue to get better every day in practice. You have to make these days count because teams don't stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. And some teams are ready for the season to be over. Uh, some teams are playing for seedings, you know, trying to punch an uh, NCAA tournament bid. Everybody's in a different place. And some teams feel like they, didn't, they may not have their coach with them next year, so they're just ready for it to end and get in the transfer portal. So it's a lot of different, you know, situations at these campuses. But for us, you know, we just want to finish and, and play in March when we get to Brooklyn, be playing the best possible basketball we can be. We hope that we can have all our guys healthy. Um, and then after that, we got work to do. You know, we, we've got a hill to climb, and we just started it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we were down at the bottom, and, and we're trying to get out of that area and try to move towards – you know, up the hill, you know, we just want to move yeah. up the hill. And so, yeah. so that's our goal. That's our plan. And, and, uh, just thankful, you know, last week we had like four games, five games in like 11 days. So <laughs> just thankful, just thankful that God gave us the endurance and the strength, man, to, to finish. We won the last two. So obviously the guys had a lot of endurance coming, come out of the end of that uh, five game stretch. Uh, last thing here about the, the bigger picture is recruiting. And you talked to us about that when you were on the set with us in October at the tip off and, and now to kind of see what you're building from a recruiting standpoint, obviously the incoming class is, and you mentioned the portal, 
Well, the kids that committed it earlier in the year in November, those that's a that's captures your eye from the starter's perspective. And yet you still got this other avenue out there where you don't know who might be available come what a month and a half from now. How big is that piece in what you're building too? Well, the first thing is I got um, – I wanted to get some high school kids first. And I know everybody said, hey, look, we don't, you don't get a lot of time at these jobs. You got to win right now. And I, I agree. It is it is what it is. I mean, my, I, I've always – this is my 22nd year. And I look at it this way. I got three sons. And I really enjoy uh, their growth from seeing them, you know, eight years old into 12. That was a four-year process. So for me, you know, going into year two, it would be nice to have some freshmen that really come in and try to help us move the program forward and that we can help them develop. They can learn the system. They got good character. They're good kids. They're team players. And then we get into year three, those guys are sophomores. And, you know, and I hope that we can keep them guys around, you know, and they really have pride in Boston College and the education that they're getting is something that really means something to them, so they want to stick for four years. And then we can grow together, you know, uh, like a family. You actually want to try to have a family who care about the program and care about the alumni and care about the community. And so I wanted to go with the freshmen first. So we got four very good freshmen, very uh, fortunate for that. And then, and then now at the end, you address your needs, okay? Is there a transfer kid? Uh, is there somebody we got a pre-existing relationship with? Is there, you know, a really good player leaving a place that fits us? I don't want to get seduced because we are a value-based program. We are, you know, process-oriented, and we know Rome wasn't built overnight. And so everything we do is going to take time. And um, and hopefully, you know, it's probably going to be a slower, a slower climb. And so I just want to get the right kid. Guys I love being in the gym with, you know, guys my family love to be around. Our alums enjoy talking to them. They compete in the classroom, don't have to worry about them making, you know, uh, a lot of bad decisions. They're kids, they can make bad decisions, but that's what I want to do. I just want to take my time and get the right guys and and uh, see if the way we've done it, you know, guys I work for, uh, that's the way we've done it. We just get the right guys, take our time, and it's a slow climb. By the way, uh, I noticed after the other win, back-to-back, man, the push-up game has never been better. My gosh. Man, you know what? I don't know what happened to me. Uh, you know, we, we, we have a we have a good we have a good time we have a good time in the locker room. But and I say what well, I told my staff. I look at a win the same way I look at my golf game. I celebrate every success because they're few and far between. Oh, and so wow. anything I do good, good, anything I do good on the golf course, I celebrate. So when we uh, when we have any success on the, as a team, man, we have fun in the locker room. Well, I'm still hurting have... from them. I'm still hurting from them push-ups right now, though. Well, I tell me what. Listen, you, you know, after you do a couple lows, back-to-back wins, and you pull off another one tomorrow, man, it's not gonna hurt anymore. Okay. You're gonna be like, hey, I did 20. I'm gonna do 30 today. I know how you go. I'm at, hey, look, I'm at to go on those bodybuilder. I'm at to go on them bodybuilder. <laughs> By the way, before we let you go, uh, we've been asking coaches this question for the last uh, six, eight weeks. Uh, what's your ultimate walk-up music for you personally? Walk up. Yep. Walk up where? I mean, get you fired up. What's, what's the song that hits you? When you hear the song, uh, man, you're like, man, I'm good to go. Let's go. Man, you know, uh, there's a lot of different songs right now uh, that get me going. Now, I don't even know the names of them. My players play them in the gym and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's probably it's probably would be like, right now, to be honest with you, it's a gospel song. It's a song called Gyra. And, uh, you know, it's a gospel song. It's a band about 10. It's like a live band, you know, and I like bands and I like drums and instruments and people playing the, you know, saxophone and, and uh, you know, and it's like 10, it's a group of 10 and there's a song called Jira, You Are Enough and um, talks about being content in every circumstance, you know, um, and so right now that's it. You know, that's kind of been my song here lately. Now my players play a lot of that hip hop in the gym before practice and you know, I hear a little certain song and I might, you know, get me going, but I don't know the name of it. I really don't even know the artist. I just, I just, I just, I just know when I hear it. I'm getting a little older, man. I, so I don't have the music like I had it, you know, and so that's that one song, Gyra, right now. It's like a gospel live band. 
You think uh, Leonard Hamilton would break that down for you? Because let me tell you, Le- Le- that was Leonard's go-to, man. He-, he loves the gospel music, big time. Yeah, yeah, he probably could break it down. I don't know if he, this one is kind of a new band. He like he probably like them old, some of them old, uh, <laughs> old gospel singers. Some of them people I probably don't even know about. You okay, know? yeah. You may, hey, if he's watching the show and he watches the show, you may hear about that one that's before you're done. You know I'm telling the truth, though. I mean, I know. Yeah, no, that's hey. All right. hey, man's got a label hey. to prove it, right, Earl? He's got a label to right, prove it. Hey, <laughs> the Lord knows you're telling the truth. I mean, you can't get in an argument. The Lord knows. <laughs> Love it. Hey, congratulations on a good first year. Look forward to seeing your team in person this weekend. Appreciate it, guys. All right.